The truth is right before your eyes and you can't ignore it. No, you can't. The truth has been right up under your nose this whole time. Now, don't act blind. Don't get blind on me now because the truth that's been hidden from the foundations of the world is now clearly coming out. And you can see that Joshua has a story to tell. Oh, I'm so amazed at the truth that's hidden right in the scriptures. If we would just open up our eyes, we will see the things that the prophets, that the messengers who came before us saw. Now we know that the spirit of Christ is prophecy. The types and shadows of Christ is seen all through the Bible. You know, God is the most wise and he gives us the types and shadows to keep us, to guard us from corruption. The corruption we see in the New Testament, courtesy of Paul. Now, today I want to shift and I want to go back into Joshua chapter 6. You know, what's amazing about the Christians is they all over John. That's right. But they never read the book of Joshua. Now, Joshua is the equivalent of Jesus. The name Joshua is the same as Jesus, and it means salvation. What's amazing is the Christians never put it together that Jesus' name means rescue, and God rescued him. God gave Jesus salvation. You're teaching that Jesus giving everybody salvation. That stuff is wrong. You want to know the real truth? Jesus is the one who was rescued. Jesus is the one who was delivered. Jesus is the one who received salvation from God Almighty when he raised him up to himself. Now, too many coincidences just don't add up. What adds up is logic. This is our man. Paul, from the tribe of Benjamin, is the wolf in sheep clothing. He is the Akon. He is the mister. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. Okay, 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 the book okay, of Joshua, okay. chapter 7, is giving us a revelation of Paul. He is Akon. He is the prisoner of the Lord. He is the one whom we call the thief. He is the one whom we call the father of lies. Now, what more do you need? Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep clothing. Paul is from the tribe of Benjamin. The symbol is the wolf. What else do you need? Jesus said, beware of one coming out of the desert. Paul came out of the desert before he hit Damascus, before he met up with Peter in Jerusalem. Now, what else do you need? Oh, you saying only the Muslims reject Paul? No. Look in history. There are the Ebionites. They rejected Paul. The bishop of Irenaeus of Lyon, he rejected Paul. The Christian group called the Sweden Borgian, they rejected Paul. Barnabas had issues with Paul. Peter had issues with Paul. James had issues with Paul. Okay? There is not one group of people in early history that did not have any issue with Paul. The problem is today the truth has been turned into a lie. So you sound dumb whenever you try to say, oh, oh, only the Muslims reject Paul. No, your ancestors rejected Paul. The Christians were rejecting Paul as a true messenger before Islam ever existed. They been had doubts about Paul. This is research you need to do on your own time. Paul was questionable from the get go. From the moment he was killing the church, he's always been questionable. Y'all the one that needs some I saw because here we have Jesus in the Bible and he never gets along with the Pharisees. You mean to tell me that the real Jesus allowed Paul to be the last and final messenger of the Christians? When Jesus is exposing a false apostle in the book of Revelation talking about one teaching everybody to eat food, sacrifice to idols, and Paul is the only one who taught us to eat food, sacrifice to idols. Why? Because he said an idol isn't nothing, okay? He just said don't offend your brother. So how many more clues do you need? You need to open up your eyes, realize that all the white men in the past have been teaching the Bible wrong. 
All of the white men today have been teaching the Bible wrong. All of the black Hebrew Israelite camps are teaching the Bible wrong. You need to wake up and deal with reality. You're not going to be able to understand the Bible at all unless you understand the types and shadows. And if you don't know that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing, you're going to be lost. Point blank. You got to learn to deal with the real truth. The elephant has been in the room the whole time. Paul is the only one in the New Testament who fits the bill that fits the description of the wolf in sheep clothing. Now tell your pastor to get at me. Tell your pastor to catch up. Tell them to give me a call. I have an email. I have a phone number that is dedicated solely to the ministry of the house of David. Let's talk about it. Let's ask these deep questions that the Christians avoid. Why was Paul in Arabia? Why was Paul calling the church saints? Why was Paul talking about a covenant with Ishmael? Let's deal with that. Now, before we go to Joshua chapter 6, let's do a recap real quick on Joshua chapter 7. And let's go to verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face. Let me tell you something. God is not a man, and he is not a son of man. This is proof right here. Look how God is talking to Joshua. God is telling Joshua to get up. Get off your face. There is sin in the camp. You people fail to realize how much that is a diss to the New Testament. Here we have the real Hebrew Joshua. And God is telling Joshua, get up. What you laying there for? There's sin in the camp. And you know according to the law of Moses, the son shall not die for the father. And the father shall not die for the son. Every man is going to die for his own sins. Regardless of what James Dobson told you. Regardless of what Billy Graham told you. Regardless of what Kenneth Copeland told you. You have been scammed. The church has been running the biggest Ponzi scheme. All over. False miracles. False signs. False prophecy. But taking all of your real U.S. currency. But taking all of your real U.S. dollars. It's a scam that's been going on this whole time. So getting back to Joshua 7. We understand that God told Joshua. Get up. Okay. In verse 11. I love this one. Israel have sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant. Which I commanded them. Now this is true in Christianity. Because right here in Deuteronomy 24 and 16. In the law of Moses. It tells us that the son shall not die for the father. And the father shall not die for the son. Every man is going to die for his own sins. Israelites wake up. You so called Israelites wake up. You are under the same spell of Christianity. The Christians are transgressing the covenant right now. Why? Because they say in Jesus die for the father's sins. They're saying Jesus die for Joseph's sins. They're saying Jesus died not only for the Israelites, but for all of mankind. That right there is against the covenant. Paul is the one who teaches that more than anybody that Christ died for your sins. According to what scriptures? Your scriptures, Paul? According to the Old Testament, there's not one scripture verbatim where God Almighty says Jesus is going to die for your sins. You would have to misinterpret Isaiah 53. That's what you would have to do, where it says his soul will be made an offering for sin, not his body. And it doesn't say his name. It is very vague. It is a huge, dark sentence that you do not know. Isaiah was told from jump to go out and misguide the people, to close their eyes, to make their ears heavy. Those were his instructions. His instructions was to blind you. And he has done a good job because right now you fail to understand Isaiah 53. Maybe in the future, if Allah permits, I will do a message on Isaiah 53. But going on to Joshua 6 and 21. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old and ox and sheep and ass with 
the edge of the sword. Joshua had it set up for everybody to get knocked off. Everybody is getting knocked off. The only person that is not getting knocked off is Rahab, which rhymes with Arab, and her family. Those are the only ones that spared. This is a picture of the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, coming back as a just ruler. And the first thing he will destroy is the cross. He will destroy Paul's church. And right here in the gospel, okay, this is a piece of the NGO right here for real. In the gospel of Joshua, that's the gospel you bypass. That's the gospel you skip over. You run to Matthew. You run to Mark. You run to Luke. You run to Johnny, Joy John. And you bypass the real Injil, the gospel of Joshua. And here we have Joshua setting up a hit. Everybody is getting knocked off. The only person that is not being killed is Rahab and her family. This is why I teach. Jesus as the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only going on to verse 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she had. So that's going into all races of people that are Muslims, not just the Arabs. But everyone who receives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger, the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. You will be safe. You will be saved because Jesus is your Messiah. Jesus is not the Messiah of the Christian Bible. OK, Jesus is the Messiah of the Quran. And he's in the beginning of the Quran. He's in the ending of the Quran. He don't just pop up in Matthew. So here we have Rahab. And her family being spared. Now let's keep going. Verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab. And her father and her mother and her brother. And all that she had. That's me and you. And they brought out all her kindred. And left them outside or without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire. And all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold, and the vessels of brass and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. Why? Because in the nation of Islam, we saved the prophet Isa alive. We are the religion that has the account of Jesus Christ still being alive. Peace and blessings be upon him. And right now, Joshua is returning the favor. He is saving Rahab alive because we know that he is alive. And her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers, which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord. That rises up and builds this city. Now this right here is a destruction of Christianity. And Joshua is saying right here. Whoever tries to rebuild this city. The firstborn son is going to die. That was a picture of him himself. Now going on. And he also says his youngest son. Shall he set up the gates of it? Now, the youngest son is going into a picture of Benjamin. He was the youngest beloved. Joseph was the oldest beloved. Jacob had two sons that was beloved. This is a picture of Christ and Paul. Now, now that younger son was always with his father. That is going into how Paul proclaimed to be the father. Now, the youngest was the strongest. This is the reason why Jacob laid his hands on Ephraim and Manasseh. And he blessed the younger over the elder. This is the reason why Jacob blessed Ephraim, which was a picture of Paul, over Manasseh, who was a picture of Christ. Okay, He said, look, I'm putting my right hand of blessing on Paul. The Christian church, okay? And I'm putting my left hand, okay, 
on the prophet Isa. He's going to die at the last day. But just like I promised Esau that he would break the yoke, you would break your brother's dominion. It's the same thing with the prophet Esau. Although the prophet Esau was dealt the left hand of blessing, okay, he has to die at the last day. At the end, he will overcome. And he will break the dominion from Paul and he will destroy the Christian church. Now, a lot of the stuff I go into is very advanced. That's why I constantly keep saying, tell your pastor about this. Tell someone who knows the Bible about this. That way they can refute me or they can join. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits, okay? Tell somebody about this. That way they can shut me up or leave me alone. This is the truth. So right here in this important passage, Joshua is telling us what happened to Christianity. The city of Jericho was rebuilt by a man by the name of Paul. And the firstborn that had to take the blame was the prophet Esau. And he will die at the last day. But the younger son had to set up the gates. And that's going into the prison in hell called Bulas in the Arabic tongue that is the name of Paul so that's what I really wanted to show you I wanted to show you something right here in the book of Joshua I wanted to show you how Christianity originated Christianity originated in rebuilding something that Joshua destroyed he destroyed all of those people and he only saved the nation of Rahab that's it and he told them Whoever tries to rebuild this city, the older son is going to pay, and so will the younger. Okay? This is right here in your Bible. You should have a greater respect for your Bible. Now that you see what's in it. Now let's finish with verse 27. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Now this is going into, at the end, the truth about Jesus, how he's a human being. How he was falsely murdered and how he was stolen from the religion of Islam and put into Christianity. And how at the last day he was restored to be the Messiah he was destined to be of another nation. Just like Joseph, okay? He started off an Israelite, but then he ended up an Egyptian. He became the Messiah of another people, of another nation, and most importantly, another religion wake up deal with reality there's too many coincidences okay and those coincidences add up to logic and you just need to use rational thinking and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had some things that was secret that it was going to take a lot of studying a lot of research to dig out and he said if you search for me with all your heart you will find me you have to search for things that are serious to you. And I remember coming in Christianity, studying, studying, studying. You got to be studied up in the Bible. I truly believe that every Christian should be so studied up to the point that when you pull out the Bible and you quote a Bible verse, they should at least be able to finish it. If not, be able to tell you what book, tell you what prophet tell you what author okay we used to play games with the bible and we would read a bible verse and you have to be able to tell us what book that's in and you got a bonus for being able to say what chapter and definitely a bonus for saying what verse you're supposed to be studied up christianity encourages studying but you see the opposite you have people in the comments that want to teach you the bible but they never even read it. That's a shame. How come you don't want to read the Bible if God is so good to you? As much as you're talking about Jesus, 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 and you never even read your own Bible from cover to cover, shame on you. If you haven't read the Bible, shut up. You should not be trying to teach nobody if you haven't read your own Bible. I realize Christians have so much to say. When they haven't even digested what's in their own book. And Joshua was a blessing 
to those who heard it today. And I want to close right back in Joshua 6 and 26 because most of the time when we hear a scripture, it takes us to hear it again and again and again for us to grab it. And Joshua adjured them at that time. This is what Joshua said. Curse be the man before the Lord that rises up. Those are key words. Rise is going into rose. That's going into yeast. That's going into resurrection. He's telling you, look, the man that rebuilds this city is going to be cursed. Now, that's deep right there. Because although the prophet Isa did not start Christianity, he ended up having to bear the curse because of Ham, because of the false Abraham, Scar, Paul. Paul is the one who claimed to be the father. And by him claiming to be the father, the prophet Isa fell under the curse of Canaan. And he had to be a servant and a servant to his brothers. Jesus was a servant of all servants. God had to make sure that there was many tutors, many people greater than Jesus. That way, the lie of Christianity can be exposed. Joshua was not greater than Moses. And it's the same thing with the prophet Isa. He was not greater than Moses. Moses is talked about more than anybody in the Quran. Moses is the only person named Moses. And Jesus had to bear the curse of Canaan all because Paul claimed to be the father in Christianity. And so when we read that scripture, let's start over again. And Joshua adjured them at that time saying, curse be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city. This is going into Jesus having to bear the curse. All because Paul started this religion called Christianity. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. Now that's going into the prophet Esau. Okay, he is the firstborn. Now Joseph was the firstborn of Rachel. Jesus was the firstborn of Mary. Jesus had to be the firstborn of Pharaoh. That is going into the firstborn of Paul. He had to bear the curse. Why? Because Paul claimed to be the father. Paul claimed to be the false Abraham. That's why Abraham told that rich man. They have Moses and the prophets. They will not be persuaded. Though one rose from the dead. If they don't believe in Moses and the prophets. They ain't going to believe. Though one rose from the dead. So. There you have it. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.